Newly constructed condos and apartments popping up across neighborhoods all over Detroit. But in today's inflated rental market, some of Detroit's most vulnerable say they're getting squeezed out further from their communities, many of them unable to find a place to live. 7 Ash News reporter Amira David has a look at the now urgent need for more low-income options in today's Two Americas report. Take a drive through Detroit and you'll be hard pressed not to hear this sound. It's a sign of change, but not a sign everyone necessarily welcomes. How long at this point have you been looking for a new place to live? Um, it's been a year. Detroit's Shea Hudson has moved back into her father's home after being displaced not once, but twice because of apartments left in disrepair. She shows me this video of what conditions were like. That is the water currently flowing from the sink right here. Safety a top concern, Shea could no longer afford to stay. She can also no longer afford to move. But the mom of three needs low income housing. Pre pandemic, making ends meet was tough. What percentage were you paying out just to live? The whole, basically the whole check. The entirety of her $600 budget was for rent, and today no longer cuts it. Rent prices are still spiking in Detroit with a 28% increase since last year, putting a squeeze on the most vulnerable. Where do you channel your frustration? I feel like, uh, number one, the city should be doing something. Detroit homeless shelters are at capacity. Existing low-income properties accompanied by waiting lists. And folks don't know where else to turn. The challenge has grown so severe that agencies are using COVID relief funds to support families living in actual hotels like this one here, a practice often referred to as hoteling. This is criticism grows from housing advocates who tell me they are over inundated with pleas for help. A lot of this housing that's going up is not for the working class here in Detroit. Tara Brown takes me to Detroit's hottest new development, Lafayette West. When you look at this development right here, I think this is 88 condo units. Touted by the city as an alternative for lower income Detroiters, just 20% of this $150 million apartment complex has been pegged for affordable housing. And the problem is the affordable housing rate at 30% of the area's median income for most Detroiters is still unaffordable. These properties are not intended for the lower income person. The only truly affordable housing is Section 8 and public housing and things of that nature. And is there enough of that? And there's no, not, not anywhere near enough of that. What there is enough of, says Ted Phillips of the United Community Housing Coalition, evictions and displaced moms like Shea Hudson. What about the people? This is where I, don't, I was born. I've tried to go other places, but I still end up coming back home. But for the first time in her life, Shay says she doesn't feel welcome in her own home, unsure of what her place is in Detroit's so-called comeback tale. If you are a low-income person barely scraping by, these good things are, are pricing you out. I'm Amira David, 7 Action News.